our searchlights we can see Hello and welcome to Once More With Feeling, Beautiful Trauma, the newest album from Pink. This time being joined by... Ask Luna. So yeah, we've been trying to work out uh, collaborative work for a while and Ask Luna chose this album and having never listened to a Pink album before seemed like a perfect idea. Um, so yeah, as I say, never listened to a Pink album before and admittedly only really know bits and pieces based off of what I've seen in music videos when they've been shown on Nevermind the Buzzcocks and things like that. So I guess you'll have to take it away with giving information here. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been, been a long, long while, while for, for me, me um, as, as to listen to Pink. That's one of the reasons why I was so excited, so excited is because she last released an album in like 2012. 2012. It's, it's been, been years. years. I think that one was Fun House. House. Um, and, that's and that's one that, that you know, went, went down, down massively, massively at conventions, conventions because she released the, the uh, Rage of Glass, Glass, which was all about being, being a nerd and accepting yourself. And She's always been like an idol for... Um, um, a lot, a lot of, of younger, younger girls, girls who are just, who are just trying, trying to find, to find like, their, their identity, identity because she's always had like a side shave and a punk cut and, and tattoos, and, tattoos and, and she's pretty, pretty awesome, awesome as a, as a like, like an adult, adult figure, figure in, the in the pop, pop industry, industry in comparison, comparison to, to the majority, majority of female artists, artists that we that get. get. Mm. Um, so yeah, so, yeah we're very very excited when Beautiful Trauma was announced. So it's been 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 a long time coming. Yeah, I. I can understand sort of the identifying with her, of course, for me, it's... I think the problem is that the mainstream media doesn't really treat her personality and character that that kindly. So I don't really get all the positives. Also, when, when she came about, I was already way into heavy metal and all the more alternative genres, so I was just sort of... Her music kind of passed me by. Yeah, I think it did for quite a few people, but she came in very much when it was like Avril Lavigne and uh, Blink-182 and all the pop-punk bands that mm. popped up. She was very much pop-rock, pop-punk kind of era. So yeah. yeah, if you were into the heavy metal stuff, you probably completely sidestepped her. Yeah, I mean... By the time she was really a big thing, I was listening to Metallica, Megadeth, um, System of a Down. Uh, in fact, that was during my new metal phase, so very diametric opposites there. Well, not, yeah. I suppose not really, but certain I mean, attitudes. I, I always had like the most eclectic taste. I was listening to like a lot, a lot of Pink, a lot of Avril Lavigne, but then there was Evanescence and System of a Down, Blink One Eight Two, uh, Kelly Clarkson, a lot of American country pop. Mm. Like I listened to a bit of everything. I think I started my my J pop and K pop phase at that time as well. So uh, it was a real eclectic mix from quite a young age. Mm. Just I'm just thinking through and just sort of have a look at her wiki because that's the only way I'm really going to. Um... I mean, one of the great things about Pink, especially recently, I mean, she's now got she's got a daughter, um, and she's been, um, you know, really upfront about the fact that she supports the LGBT community and not because, you know, you should be able to go in and say, oh hi, I'm. X, Y, or Z is to your sexuality. She's like, you are that person. You are just a person. We mm. should call it gay marriage. We should call it marriage. Um, and she's just become a real, um, like, a really inspirational member of the pop community who just says what's on her mind. Mm. Which, if nothing else, it's one of those things, even if you're not a fan of her music, you can still respect her on that level. Oh, absolutely. That's the thing with. With a lot of artists, I I find, even if I'm not a fan of their music, as long as they're presenting a positive message, then I, c I can't have a problem with them personally. I just go, yeah, can can I just not engage with the music? Um, of course, in this case, it, I enjoyed the album, so it, it's not like it was a problem for me. That's definitely a plus. Anyway, shall we get into the album proper? Yeah, let's go for it. 
So, yeah, um, I would say this much. Uh, the album overall, uh, I did enjoy it. Uh, some songs definitely more than others, and there were a couple here and there that made me go, oh dear, um, maybe shouldn't have been on this album. Yeah, I mean, I think what she's done is she's thrown out songs that definitely hit her style mm. so her audience like it and then she's thrown in quite a few experimental tracks that i think with the more traditional fan or listener miss the mark mm. uh, but i think they'll still probably succeed quite well if and when they're released separately mm. i mean i'm very much a fan of experimentation i mean massive Devin townsend fan and he's done practically every genre under the sun so i definitely don't shy away from when things get experimental uh but i suppose we should address the song that we are in agreement just didn't really belong on the album yeah it didn't fit it was um so track number two uh revenge featuring eminem it felt more like a solo collaborative EP than something that fit in the album. Yeah, I mean, after Beautiful Trauma, which is a very good opener. Oh yeah, it's a really wonderful, strong uh, opener. And I actually believe that's the second song she's releasing individually from mm -hmm. this. Um, she's recently released a collaborative work with um, an interpretive dancer. That's the word I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, that works really well. That's over on her Vivo channel on YouTube. Um, so she's going down that kind of really interesting video and voice lyric release. But that's the second track she's putting out. Right. Um, but yeah, after Beautiful Trauma, it it kind of gives you a bit of musical whiplash. Yeah. Yeah, you... I think that's the right, right way of explaining it. <laughs> you just... It's sort of like, okay, that, that was a good, strong opener. And then, ah, what the, what is this? I, yeah. I mean, to clarify, um, at least on my part, it's an okay song. For me, it wasn't absolutely horrible and shouldn't have been done or anything like that. However, in the context of this album, it just really does not work. Yeah, I can I can agree for that. Like I said, if it was released as an individual song, mm. it'd be absolutely fine. Um, hell, I'd I'd actually accept if it was on Eminem's new album as mm. a feature with Pink, like the other way round. Yeah. Fits. But I think musically, it's just a little bit out of place because everything else flows quite nicely. Yeah, I mean everything else has this sort of it's a very piano driven album. Yeah. And it's got a very sort of as you say it's everything flows and the melody kind of chains together the different songs quite often yeah um and this it just it could have worked if it was a bonus track yeah that would be the other option because if it was out of sequence with everything else then it might have been more effective but as it stands i probably would have just gone yeah let's cut it and put it on a single yeah um uh, before before the show we were talking about how there are a few songs that very much matched up in terms of favorites um you might as well go over what highlights for you there were um i mean obviously i've already said beautiful trauma mm. i thought that was a really strong opener um beautiful melody um quite meaningful lyrics which was quite nice mm. um what About Us, which was the preview song that she released uh, last month, yeah, which was really, really good. Again, really good video to go with that as well, um, and really powerful lyrics for that one. Mm. Um, I think most of the songs I really, really liked were the more upbeat tracks. Mm -hmm. um, so I Am Here, Where We Go, and Secrets were the other ones that I really, really, really liked. Um, and then finally, there was "You Get My Love," which is the like the closing song. Yeah. Up, um, as in, like, she's well known for being a really emotional vocalist, mm. and this absolutely nails it. It's probably the most powerful song on the album from a vocal standpoint. Definitely. Um, just absolutely, you can just picture her on stage belting that out as the closing song on her show, and it would be 
you know, so emotional for the audience. You could feel it in the lyrics. So that was like one of my favorites. Mm, yeah. For me, it's so whatever you want was actually one of my favorites. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure what it was about that. I just, it was the sort of song that I kind of gravitate to when it comes to pop music. I mean, not listening to that much, generally speaking, it's all there are select sounds that I just go, yeah, this works for me. Yeah. Um, What's About Us is a match. Uh, possibly because I found myself relating to the lyrics a bit too much. It was one of those, ah, um, okay. Um, uh, Secrets, again, uh, was a favourite. Uh, also a, ah, uh, okay. I relate to this a bit too much, which says a bit too much about me, I think. I think it says a lot about most of us, to be honest. I think that's one of the, the great things about the songs that really stand out, is they're all relatable in some way. Mm. And uh, you're not your standard, oh, look, it's just another sad love song, or a breakup song, or uh, I really want to have sex with you song. Mm. It's like an actual meaningful song. Yeah. Uh, and same for me, You Get My Love. That that was well i actually went through each of the songs and did a individual ratings or out of fives and that i actually gave a five out of five so wow yeah never let it be said that i don't give every genre of music due credit <laughs> no you definitely do um but yeah you get my love definitely definitely had the power necessary to convey the message that wanted to be conveyed. Uh, I'm stumbling over my words here. Uh, the thing is, You Get My Love is one of the songs that I can actually, I can hear it as I'm talking about it. Yeah, it definitely stays with you. It's definitely a really memorable track. And I mm. think it's even more memorable because of its placement in the album. Say if that was like middle of the album, you probably wouldn't care as much, but it's the final track. Yeah, and that's one thing that um, I often focus on with album progression, that sort of thing, is would I change where a song comes? And You Get My Love, it needs to be the closing song. Oh, absolutely. There's not another track on the album that I would have put in that spot. Mm. Um, I'm just... I mean, there's like a couple other tracks on there that weren't too bad, so... Uh, Barbies, that was quite a good one. Not mm. one of my favourites, but it was enjoyable to listen to. Yeah. Um, and I think for now wasn't too bad. The problem is, other than the ones I've already said that I really enjoyed, mm. and Barbies being, it was memorable enough, the other ones are all quite forgettable. They weren't, they didn't have a tempo that got me interested. The mm. lyrics were good, but they weren't, the melody wasn't there. Obviously, it's all my personal opinion. Um, but I feel like the ones I've said, like Secrets and You Get My Love and Beautiful Trauma, they're all really, really memorable. But otherwise, I can't recall what those tracks are. Yeah, I mean, But We Lost It felt kind of forgettable and a bit of a reiteration of the sentiments presented in What About Us. Yeah. And uh, for now, that felt like another recycling. Wild Hearts Can't Be Broken... That really wasn't, like, in comparison, that's, like, the other majorly slow song on the album. And mm. it just, in comparison to You Get My Love, which follows up, just didn't have the same feel to it. Yeah, it just, well, lyrically it just felt a bit generic. Um, it sounds pretty, but that's all I can really say about it. It sounds pretty. Yeah. Um, I'm just thinking through and, uh, yeah. I mean, as it stands, I I don't know about you, but I think this might have worked better as an EP. No, I mean, I'm I'm really happy with it as an album. Um, I think it works quite well. It's quite similar to the format of a lot of her previous albums. Um, it didn't disappoint. Like, the entire album, even though there's some songs that I don't remember, the entire album hasn't disappointed me in the slightest. Mm. I think, as a whole, it's a really, really strong release, especially after five years of nothing. Mm. Like, other than the occasional single for, like, Alice in Wonderland, um, and she did one with Cher. Was it Cher? I wouldn't know. I don't, I, got, I don't know if it was Cher. Let me go back. No, it's Celine Dion. Ah. 
Yeah, she did a track with Celine Dion. Other than those, she hadn't released an album in ages, so it made a really big difference at the end. Mm-hmm. Although, yeah, I'm I'm continuing with the running joke. At least she's released more than Tool has in eleven years. That's a good point. <laughs> they haven't released any anything in the past eleven years. No singles, no albums, nothing. Yeah, it's not. You get a little bit like, oh, I really missed that band, and then you just forget about them after a while. But yeah, Pink's managed to, you know, mm. stay up and coming. Yeah. Um, yeah. I suppose we are in the final thoughts. So, um, overall score for the album. Um, well, you go first. I think it's a four out of five for me. I can't give it the full amount because there's, you know, out of the, what, 13 tracks on the album, I'm still listening to six. Mm mm. So I'm listening to just under half the album, um, and I've been listening to them since uh, Friday. So, like, five days of pretty much on loop. Mm. Like, I listened to the album on loop on a nine-hour flight, and I'm still not bored of those songs. So it's it's really, really up there. I just wish there were a few more tracks that really caught my attention. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's sort of three, possibly 3.5 because uh again it's there are certain songs that just don't really strike a chord with me and um obvious i you were saying about how um your personal feelings towards pink sort of bump the score up slightly oh yeah definitely but there's no real way to uh, you know get past that i don't think yeah it's it's a bit like me with rating a Devin Townsend album. Unless he releases something completely awful, it's always going to be at least a four. So yeah. Um, but whilst I wouldn't necessarily return to the album in its entirety, there are songs from it that I would put on again. That's a good thing, though. That's a good thing in the end, anyway. Mm. Um, for non-Pink fans, I'd definitely say that it's worth a listen. Um. I wouldn't say it necessarily make you into a fan, but it would at least encourage you to listen to more of her work. For sure. I think it's a it's a pretty good introduction to what Pink is like emotionally as an artist. Mm-hmm. Um, and it might get you interested in some of her, uh, not super early work, but her last set. So Fun House was a really good album to go off the back of this. Mm-hmm. Um would you say that um, most Pink fans would gravitate towards it, or...? I think so. Like, I can't really think of many Pink fans who wouldn't be interested in at least giving it a chance Mm. after it's been so long, unless they have changed their personal taste in music drastically. Mm. So, unless they've suddenly completely changed to listening to dubstep and techno and all that sort of thing constantly yeah i mean i think this album is really good if you if you liked pink in the first place i think it's really good if you like like pop music um i think it's pretty good if you're still into the pop punk stuff there's a little bit of that in there um obviously if you're just into you know metal or country music or r&b or dubstep then yeah maybe Maybe not for you, but I mean, I'd say everybody should give it a go because it's quite a powerful album. Mm. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it for this episode. Um, yeah, next episode is either going to be uh, the Clusterfuck review, if I can wrangle Pierce, because our schedules have become a bit skewed. Um, but it's either that or a Patreon review, which... I'm actually considering making the Patreon reviews. I review the album with the patron. So that could be interesting. Yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely worth joining in on that. <laughs> yeah, whichever it'll be, I will be updating on the Facebook page and my Twitter and all the relevant places. Um, but yeah, that's it for this episode. It's goodbye from me. It's goodbye from me. Oh, Before I do stop recording, uh, would you like to sell your channel? 
<laughs> yes, so I am a live streamer and a uh, cosplayer, so follow me over on Twitch at Askaluna. I'm on Twitter at Askaluna Cosplay. Um, I'm sure uh, that you'll pop all the links down below for people to follow me over there. Yeah. Um, and follow my endless sewing ramblings. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks for joining in. Goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye. But you get my love, baby.